Proton pump inhibitors are very popular drugs in the medical profession, and now that they're sold over the counter, they're even more popular and they're used by millions of people every year. The fact is about $10 billion is spent every year, and there are about 15 million people using these drugs. They've been around for about 20 years. And the reason that they're so popular is because they work. They help with, with people who have acid indigestion, people who have ulcers or reflux esophagitis, particularly those who have GERD. And they're like a miracle sometimes because they really cut the symptoms back. But the problem is, is that they have side effects too. And we tend as doctors and as patients not to think so much about the negative side effects as we do about the effects that we're looking for. So things such as knocking out your acid means you can't digest food like you normally would because you need acid to do that. You also can't absorb calcium or magnesium or iron or B12. And that means it puts you at risk for osteoporosis. In fact, the risk for osteoporosis goes up about 40% after being on it for about two years. And by the way, the drug is only approved by the FDA for about eight weeks. So because they work so well and there aren't other great alternatives in the mainstream, doctors tend to use them and patients get the idea that it's okay too. Some of these drugs are drugs like Asafex and Nexium and Prilosec and Protonic, Protonics. And they're different than the H2 blockers, which are drugs like Zantac and Tagamet, which were used a generation before. But over the past 20 years since these drugs have been available, because they're so readily available and because they work so well, they've been used a lot. Now, as you might imagine, as we keep drugs in the market for a longer time, we are learning more and more about their side effects. And in the past year, we learned about two more side effects that are really impressive. One is the incidence of chronic kidney disease. We found in two studies, one showing 9% increase in chronic kidney disease and the other 28% increase in chronic disease, uh, kidney disease, was published in the journal Internal Medicine in, the, in, the, in January of 2016. But this isn't all that we've discovered. We've also found that heart attacks increase. There's about a 16% increase in heart attacks and a doubling in the in the mortality rate of people who are taking these proton pump inhibitors and have GERD. And that's an awful lot of people who are doing that. And this study was published in the Public Library of Science, one, in June of 2015, and on about 3 million pa uh, patients over 18 years. So we're looking at something that really has been used uh, a lot by a lot of people. So we're looking at numbers here that start to add up, and there are really problems associated with it, so we have to pay attention to that. In addition, the drugs that are in the proton pump inhibitor family also affect other medications. Plavix, for example, is probably decreased. It's a drug that's used by people who've had heart attacks or strokes who were trying to anticoagulate, and it can mess up the amount of anticoagulation that's caused by that. And then it can interfere with the metabolism or the detoxification of drugs like Valium and Coumadin and Digitalis and Dilantin. So what we're discovering is that these drugs are not just playthings. These are not things to be used for convenience. These are really drugs that have powerful effects. And we should not be looking to be uh, solving our problems with drugs, particularly ones like this that have so many side effects that all come into, the, into our awareness so slowly that we don't appreciate how serious that they are. And like all other drugs, you know, there are direct-to-consumer ads. The pharmaceutical industry is absolutely brilliant in the way it promotes these things on TV. They spend about $5 billion a year now in direct-to-consumer ads. And doctors are at the other end of, the, of this uh, problem because what happens is patients learn about these drugs, and then they go to their doctor and say, why can't I try it? Or even worse, now that they're over the counter, they think they must be safe if they're over the counter, so they just use them. So we have to pay attention to what we do when we're using any kind of pharmaceutical drug, even the ones that work well and the ones that seem to be well tolerated when we don't know all the side effects and complications we get into because we don't study them that much.